So today we're going to restore a fascinating tool from the past, a Thomas Dedal 50 pound hand scale. Goodness, how interesting is this? A 50 pound hand scale, rare. Have you ever seen one of these? I had never seen anything like this. I didn't even know that it existed. But once I've learned a little bit about it, well, it made sense why something like this would have been so important in the day and still could be important. So where did I get this? How did I come by this beautiful scale? And what's really great is it has the weight. What I've read, it's sometimes pretty hard to find the weight that they're often lost. This one's got the weight because without the weight, it's of no value. This beautiful scale was, um, was given and trusted to me by one of my subscribers uh, that we met at the Mother Earth News Fair. Sorry, I don't have uh, permission to use his name, uh, but you know who you are. If you want to come forward and receive your accolades in the comments, um, please feel free to do so. But this is something that I've been looking forward to doing. So we'll get into how it works and all that and we'll try it out. But 50 pounds, can you believe that on something so slight that you could measure? You know, why is this so important? Well, you know, if back in the day, if you were a blacksmith selling nails, you know, of course, everything was sold by weight. Barley corns or chickens or, or what have you, you would hitch up there on the hook and you could know if you're being cheated or not. You had your handy scale you could whip it out and know that you were getting what you paid for. So quite interesting. One small issue, which is not an issue, it's an opportunity for us, is that it is missing one piece. And that piece is uh, the connecting piece for this weight. This weight needs to connect and be able to slide freely across this rod, which you may or may not be able to see has graduated numbers uh, from one to 10 pounds. Now, if it only goes to 10 pounds, you say, how does it go to 50 pounds? Well, that's the genius part of it. It's in the fulcrum here. So there is this side here, which, which is the, let's see, do I have this right? This is the heavy side. See the fulcrum? And then if I flip it over and use this side, this is the light side. Very interesting, such a, you know, the mind that invented these things. So let's get to the, let's get to the restoration here. So what we're gonna do, we need to make, and I wanna make it just like it would have been originally. And I think I found, I searched high and low all morning to try to find what the original connector looked like. Cause this, you know, it had to be able to take, you had to be able to take it off and keep it in your pocket. It's a two piece tool. But what I saw and what I think that this scale had Here's a piece of rod. Um, this is an old leftover Jeep part. I think this is a rod for the seat upholstery. There, I use them all the time, but it's about the right size. You can see here, very similar there to what we have. I think it'll be perfect, just mild steel. But what they did is they, they made a, a nice little loop and then put this, a twist in it. And the twist was just a nice, I think it was just a nice touch. Yeah, you could just make a loop and it would hang this way. But that little twist they had turned it so it went horizontal, you know, kind of perpendicular there with the shadow. I think, it, I thought it looked nicer that way. It was just, that's the way they did things back in the day. You know, they just made them, they made them beautiful. Just we'll clamp this up in the old snappy Tom Vice. He had a auto shop teacher, but he was a character Nesbit. <laughs> he, he was a polio, well, he had, a pol had polio as a child. And so he was uh, crippled from the waist down. He could walk <coughs> with difficulty. But uh, he was he was a funny guy. He was had the most. He was the strongest. He had the strongest upper body strength uh, of anyone his size I ever came across. One time we tried to force him into his office and a little office in the auto shop, nail a door shut. It's like I think when we were graduating from seniors, you know, that's the kind of relationship we had with him. We we're always goofing off, and there were four of us that tried to get him in that office and get hold the door shut. He fought his way through it and all of us came out of there licking our wounds. We, none of us were, were unscathed. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I've got, I've got a little piece of wire here that we'll use for a template, but what I saw looked 
something like this here, right? It kind of it kind of hung down. It was of course shorter. We're going to use the template so that we know what size to cut the steel. It hung like this, but was really cool was that it had a twist in it. it. Had a twist in it like that, that that uh, so that this road like this parallel to the bar there. Um, so let's kind of fashion this and in a, and then we can get the, the length. We can cut this to length of steel and then make, make it here. What we're going to do, we want this to be, uh, what I think we should do is, m is make a loop. I want these, I want this to be, I want the, the pieces to come up here to, uh, together at the end because I want to weld it. I want that seam at the top. I don't want it, yeah, we want it to look nice there, but we need to make an oval something like that and then a, with a small twist in the bottom like this here something like this but it's got to fit over that it's got to fit over that the end of that to scale so this here this can be pretty small so this needs to be about like Sky. We don't want any. It, we don't want it to be any bigger than it. it doesn't need to be any bigger than it needs to be. How's that look? Is that about like that? That'll sit on there. Give us plenty of room to get over. I think. I think we can go with this here. I'll mark that, and then we'll know. We know the length that we want to cut our steel, so we can cut our template to length here. Well, I got my Jay Leno denim shirt theme going on here, don't I? <laughs> you want to know, uh, watch a good YouTube channel. Uh, Jay Leno has got a, a YouTube channel where they do a bunch of stuff on cars. And it's not overly produced. It's really nicely done. I really like it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to it, I, I, think, I think you'll enjoy it. If you like machines and cars, they do a great job. And it features a lot of guys that, you know, just common guys that have just done their own restorations. They're not all, some of them are real fancy ones, but not all of them. Uh, but he always wears a denim shirt in there, and I was look, watching that, and I thought, that looks pretty smart. So I took that from him. I think a denim shirt with tan pants, that looks, that's pretty good, pretty handsome attire for the shop. Using granddad's old side cutters, dykes, some people call them. So I don't know what the difference is. I love, using, I love using the tools that I grew up with. I just remember these in his toolbox, and I remember him asking me to get them and to have them and to use them as is is pretty fun. I was interviewing um, Joe Salatin uh, years back uh, at the Mother Earth News Fair in Oregon, and uh, he didn't know me, and, and we'd never met before. If those of you, anyone who doesn't know who Joe Salatin is, uh, you need to get his books. He's the he's the rock star of farming uh, in in America. He's an incredible incredible guy. What he's done. But we were having we we sat down to do this interview, and he was obviously bored and had done this, I mean, he has done this thousands, thousands of times, you know, it's the same questions from, you know, from the same type of people and all of that. And I could see that he really wasn't into it. And we were so, <laughs> Mrs. W and I, we were so unprofessional. We had this cheap $200 camcorder. We had no microphones and he's commenting on that. And he's like, good grief, what am I doing with these yahoos wasting my time? Uh, he didn't come across as that, but we, I think we were a little self-conscious about it. So, you know, and I'm asking him the normal questions and, and he's given the normal answers and everything I read. It's just not going anywhere. It's not very interesting. And I thought, this is not the way I want this to go. This is, I, I think that there's something here, more, something more special. So I got off the topic of the, that he talks about all the time and I got to talking about the old tools. And, and, and it was amazing how <laughs> uh, the chemistry changed between us. It went from having this disconnected back and forth to both of us being very involved. And I was talking about, started talking about what it was like to work with my granddad's tools. And he got into it and was, was talking also about working with his dad's tools. And, and I've got the video on my channel somewhere. If you search Joe, Joe Salatin, the audio, the video quality, it's all terrible. But we had a really great time. It was actually Joel that is the one that taught me how to do the, the mushroom stump. You know, the stumping that I do out when we're out working in the forest to, to cut them down so they look all nice. He's the one that told me about that. Uh, but we had a great conversation. And uh, if you haven't read his books or seen him speak or his YouTube stuff, um, check him out. He is, uh, he's an extraordinary man. So we can cut our rod. Now, when you have small stuff like this and you gotta cut it, you know, you can get a lot of vibration. Same thing with wood. 
And the closer you can get it to the vise, the better. It, you get less of that, less of the, the chatter. Use our hacksaw here. Shouldn't take long. So this being a pretty heavy piece of steel, what is this thing? It's a little, oh, about a little over an eighth inch. It's pretty robust, and, and bending this into a into a, a circle or an egg, an oval is actually not going to be no small thing. I think we're going to need to use a little bit of heat. I think that's going to make our life a whole lot easier. Well, maybe maybe we could pound it into submission. It's such a short piece to work with. I probably should have left it long and marked it and worked off of the longer piece. I think there's no way around it. We're going to need to bring the heat. So let's get the acetylene torch. Actually, I don't use a acetylene torch anymore. I use a propane, propane and oxygen will do the trick. It's a, it's a lot more cost effective. The propane's cheaper than the acetylene is. I'll show you a little tool that my granddad built for, that's really great for little projects like this. So granddad built this uh, stand for the torch. When uh, we went to the beach one time, I was just little, and he uh, saw there was a guy selling, uh, at, you know those junk stores, how they're always selling junk at the, at the beaches. Uh, was selling these little cars that he'd made from spark plugs. It was like he'd take an old used spark plug and then he welt welded uh, little bolts on it, little axles, little rods. They look like little race cars with a little top, you know, like a Formula, Formula One car. And I remember Granddad picking those up and he said, I could make those things. And so <laughs> he, came, he came home and that became his cottage business. He made those little, uh, little cars from the spark plugs. But he made this stand right here so he could hold his torch, his brazing torch. And so he would, he would hold it there and, and heat things up and, and bend it on there. But it kind of freed you up because these things, you know, you don't want them to fall on the floor and you, want it, you don't want it to, to flip over. I mean, it'll burn you so bad, it's so hot uh, to have this little stand here that you can adjust uh, is great. So we're gonna use that. We'll, we'll set it up here and we'll get the rosebud going and then uh, we can heat and bend, heat and bend at our leisure. It's, it's really nice. Wish I still had one of those little race cars. I had a couple. I don't ever know what happened to them. Granddad would make them. We, he always did, we did everything together. He was, uh, he was great that way. And he'd always include me and, and we'd always share the profit. So he'd make those little race cars and I'd paint them. Paint them and I'd paint racing numbers on them and all of that. Another thing that he did, we did it once a year. It was such a wonderful tradition. It just makes me so nostalgic to think about it was he, well, he worked at the Ford garage. And so he, he was an Okie that lived through the depression and he saved everything. As I've mentioned in the past, he threw nothing away. Um, so, so far as he would straighten nails that were pulled out and save them. When, when uh, we'd change oil on cars, you know how you've got the plastic quartz, he would save those and he would tip them upside and let them drain for 24 hours to get every drop out of it. And after 50 oil chances or so, he might have a quick extra quart, but that's the, way you, that's the way they were. A lot of you that have family members that lived through the depression will know what I'm talking about. But so he, at the Ford garage, he would save all the nut and bolts, all the scrap metal, anything that was taken off the cars that, the, that they, they would give him. Um, they didn't keep scrap metal back then um, to let the guys take it home. So he'd save it up in the backyard and have enough once a year to take a load to, to Zeusman, Zeusman up in uh, Portland, and we would sell that scrap metal. And on the morning on the way up, we'd stop and get Dunkin' Donuts. I'll never forget that. They had a little window where you'd look in the bakery there and you could see them making. We'd stop and get the, the Dunkin' Donuts. We'd go up and sell the scrap metal and, and then come back. And I'd get to buy something. And I was about Jack's age or so. And, you know, I, mean, I think about how spoiled Jack is compared to what kids of art, you know, I mean, of course, every generation says that. But for me to get a, to have money like that, I mean, it just was unheard of. So, so we would sell that stuff and usually make about $100. 
and I, I got to stop and, and buy like a big Lego set, like a space set. It was, I mean, it was just an amazing thing, <laughs> an amazing thing. But Granddad always split everything 50-50, even though he did 99.9% .9 of the work. This is called a rosebud here. It's a, it's a very intense, uh, what you can see all the whole little holes in it. It's a little intense way to heat, heat steel there. And how you start these things, maybe, I don't know if you've seen one of these or not. Is it going to focus, focus there? It's a sparker. That's how you start a torch, and it's got a little replaceable piece of flint in there. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Someday they'll make one that works. Uh, and you can screw that out and replace that little flint there. But these are, if you haven't seen those before, that's how you start it. All right, so you always start with a, Propane or the acetylene, not the oxygen. Whoa, oh, it got away from me there. Then we can introduce the oxygen. And we want to bring that down until we get little points. Well, that does murder, replace murder with the ISO on the camera, doesn't it? Just to give you an idea how hot this thing gets, I did something so stupid years ago that it makes me mad every time I think about it. You see my workbench there? I built this workbench and this steel plate was perfectly flat. This is my work area, so I like to have a flat surface. Well, I bumped this thing and it flipped over and I was behind my back and it heated that, it heated my bench up. It was, it was cooking it, like right here somewhere. And I turned around like five minutes later and the, half the thing was red hot and all warped and I never have been able to get it flat again. It was such a, it was a freak thing, but man, it sure has messed me up ever since. Okay, I think we're ready to get to work here. We're gonna get a good, reliable pair of pliers here. I got my Wildland gloves on because it's pretty hot. And then we can leave those pliers, get a good pair of snap-on pliers like these. They make the best pliers in my opinion. They got those nice grooves in there. Helps you hold, kind of reference there. We we'll hold it in the center, then we can start bending this oval into a nice egg-shaped oval. Good afternoon, a beautiful Thursday afternoon on the homestead. Looks like it's a little hazy today and it's very, very windy. I'm sorry to leave you hanging here, but boy, we just ran out of time. You know, you guys said you like the stories and to tell the stories, well, we don't really get to the work, but we'll get to it. It'll take a video or two, but we'll get to it. I pro promise you that. So what's going on? So Man, there was how there were howls. There was, there were, there were howls of indignation of me covering up the mountain scene, the end card mountain seed scene, with shameless promotion, asking people to subscribe, asking people to like and comment. Well, it's because if I don't ask, you guys don't do it. It's amazing to me. Four hundred what? Four hundred nine thousand subscribers. How many thumbs up do we get? Less than three thousand. So. I hear you. I'm not going to clutter up your beautiful mountain scene at the end, but there it is. Do it. You got the time. We should have 50,000 thumbs ups on every video. All right. Got that. And don't forget to comment either. Shameless promotion. Well, you know, if I don't ask you guys, just don't do it. So what? There was something I wanted to talk about today. Oh, okay. So um, Bible, Manly Manners. I haven't done a Manly Manners for a long time. Well, I'm sad to say that I kind of misplaced my Manly Manners book, but I just found it. So I will work in some Manly Manners. The second is, how come you're not doing the Bible study? Man, Mrs. W and I, we have just been pedaling as fast as we can this last six weeks or so, and lots of traveling. And I, I apologize for that. We just haven't had the time uh, to get to it. And, of course, you know, the devout Christian would say, well, you know, you need, that should be you'd be putting that first before anything else. I get that. I understand that. But we've got to run the channel, and, and we're trying to find time to do both of them. So we're going to, uh, we're going to attempt to, to get that up and, and do that on Sabbath. Uh, that'll be Saturday mornings. Uh, that is an easier time for us because that's a time that um, 
we don't have any work scheduled. So we're going to try that. You know, see see if that happens. And and yeah, I feel sorry sorry for that boy. One comment that really was um, I guess it really stung me, or it, I thought it was awfully mean. And of course, it came from a Christian. Was uh, the reason why they're not doing the Bible studies is because they don't make profit from them. You know how we say Christians always say the meanest things and are the most hurtful of people. I don't know. I don't know. That was a very hurtful thing. But the reason why I bring it up, I would say that was certainly not the, not the case. That was not the case. I'm sorry if anyone thought that. So we'll, uh, we'll hit part two coming up uh, tomorrow. Mrs. W is, well, she's in her element right now. She's in the kitchen. I just posted uh, some short videos on our Instagram feed uh, of her. She's making her famous pickle relish. The one that whenever she meets someone, they always ask for the recipe or they ask uh, for a jar of it. And she very graciously agreed to let me make a video of her making it. So look forward for that coming up here very soon too. Elderberries are... We haven't done those yet because they're not ripe yet. They're coming on, um, but man, things are are going off in the garden, and Mrs. W has a lot of things that she's excited to share. So look for those coming up. All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. All right, bye-bye.